In today's video, we are going to be breaking down one of the greatest players of all time, and that is Michael Jordan. Let's get down and let's check out MJ. Okay, so in this clip, what do we get to see? Well, what we are looking at is, of course, his right foot is pointing straight towards the basket. His shooting form is actually quite similar when it comes to his main body as Kobe Bryant. May he rest in peace. Today is his one year anniversary of that tragic accident. But Michael Jordan gathers that ball right at his hips. From there, we can see that he is obviously looking at that basket and he is doing that even before he takes his last step. This defensive player should have been more on Michael Jordan, but again, Michael Jordan is a very hard player to guard. So from there, what else do we see? Well, in this clip, he does step into his shot. Sometimes he does do a jump stop into his shot as well. His shoulders are over top of his knees, which are over top of his toes, which is allowing him to be nice and balanced. From there, when he brings that ball up into his set point, his set point is quite high over top of his head. He has a very high set point, which makes it a hard time for defenders to try and block. That is another similarity between Kobe and MJ. Even though their upper part of their shot is different, they do have a lot of similarities. For example, their left shoulders are both back, as well as their hips are both back. We also notice that Michael Jordan, his right knee is facing towards the rim as same as his left knee as well. From there, he does get down quite low, almost 90 degrees. And when he goes up to release that ball, we do notice that he releases his guide hand first and he releases with his middle finger last. Now from this angle, we see that he's able to start or he does start and gather the ball from the middle of his hips and up. One of the things that I really do focus on with a lot of players is their elbow. The reason for that is because you don't want to have that much movement in your shot and we can see with Michael Jordan he does not go and bend his elbow when he brings it from his gather up to his set point. When he does go into his set point, he does have a 90 degree angle on his elbow which is going to allow him to have a very fast release and he does bend his wrist back almost pretty close to a 90 degree angle as well. This is going to allow him to have a very consistent shot and we can also see that he has a very close to 90 degree angle when it comes to his upper arm and body. Now one thing I will point out to players who are trying to shoot the basketball better, if you are unable to get your elbow underneath that ball, you may want to do what a lot of really great shooters do, and that is by tilting their left shoulder, left hip, and left foot back farther than their right and not be squared up towards the basket. Try that a few times and see if you can improve your shot performance and if it works then you can continue to improve on it. If it doesn't work then you can go back to trying to go and square up with the basket. Now Michael Jordan's set point is over top of his head, quite high I shall add, but over top of his forehead to be exact, and we can see from here that his shoulder is in line with his elbow which allows him to have a very straight shot. The ball is also underneath the elbow which allows him to have a very consistently straight shot. If your elbow is flared out towards the right, and you are unable to get that elbow underneath that ball, that ball is going to then try and turn in air and you really don't want that to happen because of course now you have to try and do a lot of different physics type math to try and make that shot and you really don't want to do that. So if you just cannot get your elbow underneath that ball, tilt your left side of your body back a little bit farther and you're going to be able to do that. Now in a lot of shots, you're going to see that Michael Jordan does bring his right leg in and he uses most of the power coming up from his left leg, which is facing towards the basket in this shot. Sometimes when he does do a step back, this right leg will not bend inwards and what he'll have is the right leg that flares out, which is something that does happen quite often with Michael Jordan's shot. Now, 
What we do see from his shot when it does go up to its release is that there is a space between his palm and the ball. We can also see this by a shadow when he's down into his set point. This is what I'm talking about by having his right leg not tilting in when he is doing a step back or a turnaround jumper, but what he does do is kick that leg out. Why is this important? This is a very, very big factor in Michael Jordan's shot as well as Kobe Bryant's shot. Why do we see a right leg that flares out? The reason for the flared out leg is so that now, because he started his shot with his right leg pointing towards the rim and his right shoulder flared back, even though he's a right-handed shooter, by flaring that leg out, it's almost like a figure skater when they put their arms out and they spin slower. It's able to allow him to stop his spinning body in his shot, but also it's allowing him to again straighten out that right side ahead of his left so that that elbow can be underneath that ball. It's a very big factor in Michael Jordan's jump shot. Now I just really want to focus on one more thing and that is Michael Jordan's fingers. Check out how spread out his fingers are. He has one finger there, he has another finger here, another one here, and another one on that side of the ball. Why is it important to have your fingers spread out on the ball? Well, because if your elbow gets knocked when you're going up for a shot, if you do not have a spread out hand, it's going to you're going to lose control of that ball. There's also another reason for it as well, and that is you're going to have more control of that ball and you're going to be able to have a lot more of a consistent shot and by having your hand out wide like Michael Jordan's is, if you ever if you're a player and you ever feel like that ball goes off your pinky finger or goes off your pointer finger, that ball's going to turn in air. And you really don't want that, and that's why if you ever feel that happened, happen to your hand and happen with the ball in your hand when you're shooting, that's because your hand is not wide enough. So if you ever feel the ball going off your pinky finger or ever going off your pointer finger, and you know that your ball was over top of your elbow, and you see that the ball turns in air away from the rim, this is what it means. All you need to do, and it's the simplest fix that you can ever do, and that is just have your hand wider. We can also see that he does not shoot with a thumb flick. He releases that ball quite early, and we do see that technically his three fingers release this ball last. However, I can guarantee you if the frame didn't skip, that, of course, it was his middle finger because anytime you have a release with three fingers your middle is always going to be the longest and technically by milliseconds or milli one trillionth of a second it's going to be the last finger that touches that ball now something that a lot of players really don't pay attention to is their total release when it comes to their wrist if you've got a hard release like michael jordan does or a strong release however which way you want to call it and that is just basically a flat hand down that's going to create more backspin on that ball, but less arc towards the rim. If you've got a curved hand, it's going to reduce the spin, but give you more arc. So you need to try and find a balance that you like. And for how good Michael Jordan was at shooting the ball, but also winning games, I would never change that. That comes down to a personal preference to you and how you feel like you shoot better. And I can tell you right now, when I'm setting up for a very set shot, I'm going to have a very hard release on, or a very strong release on my shot. Because I can, if I'm wide open, I know that I've got time to release the ball high, keeping my elbow above my forehead, which is something that Michael Jordan does as well. By keeping your elbow above your forehead, you're going to have the arc that you need, but by having a strong release, that's going to have the backspin that you need. So that way you can have the ability to have what I would call a perfect shot with a lot of arc and a lot of re rotation backwards on that ball so it hits that rim nice and lightly. But if you are in a position like what I like to be sometimes, which is a nice tight shot, I'll release really quickly and I'll have a really soft release which will allow me to have that arc to get it over top of the player and sometimes it may not have enough backspin 
But if you've got enough arc, that rim's going to look bigger anyways to that ball. So that's just how I personally like to shoot. I hope that this video has helped you become a better basketball player. If it has, hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again next time.